be here presenting as part of OSLC Fest. Uh, I really enjoyed the presentations yesterday and also Gray's today. Um, great start to the day. Um, <clears throat> so I'm here to describe really PTC's progress in terms of our support and implementations um, of OSLC in our tool set. So give, really wanted to give everyone an opportunity to understand the progress we've made and what capabilities we have today. Um, so first of all, a quick sort of history lesson. Uh, PTC started business in the mid eighties and we made our first success in the market with Pro Engineer and Parametric 3D CAD. So we came out of the hardware design and detailed design world. And then a decade or so later, we recognized the need for somewhere to manage all of this engineering data. And we then acquired a PLM system, which um, you will have heard of probably called Windchill, Windchill PLM nowadays. Um, and then maybe about 15 years ago, we recognized again the change in our customers' needs and an increasing need for requirements management and system design, really ALM type technologies. And I think it was 2011, we acquired MKS, which gave us the integrity product line, now known as Winchill RVNS, requirements, verification, and source. Um, so that was 2011. Um, we acquired a requirements management tool. And then 2014, we acquired a Tigo um, and the uh, model-based systems engineering tool modeler, as it is called today. So that's the product I'm responsible for, Windshield Modeler. Oh, Patrick, we can only see your title slide. Is that normal? Yes, I haven't really gone anywhere yet. Okay, all good. Just <laughs> I'm still on the history lesson, I guess. Um, all good. <laughs> and so really, as we acquired these companies, we moved from really a, a PLM um, type of organization to having ALM capabilities. And very quickly, the need for an integration between all of these tools became very apparent. Customers were buying all of the software and we didn't really have solid integrations between the requirements tool, the PLM tool. So that's really where OSLC came in. And five or six years ago, we started to implement OSLC technologies because we saw it as the, the, the most developed standard that would help us build these integrations. And not just with our own tools, we also recognize that third party products, such as um, the ones we've seen a moment ago from IBM, we'd also need to be able to connect to those and any other future tools into the future that would be part of a digital thread um, and be, need to be connected. So we, we talk nowadays really about the engineering digital thread and the products in our portfolio that we refer to really in this area are Winchell RVNS for requirements engineering and CodeBeamer, which is a new acquisition for PTC, requirements engineering test management, MBSC from Winchell Modeler, and then product lifecycle management from Winchill PLM. So these are really the core engineering tools that most of our engineering manufacturing, discrete manufacturing customers are utilizing. We've branched out into cool things like IoT and augmented reality. And we have manufacturing technology as well. Um, but really, these are the core engineering solutions that we provide. And there's a very strong need for integration across these tools. So that was, that was the need. And our vision has really been to um, provide the capabilities from these software solutions to support, in general, the engineering V, where we have requirements, architecture design, system level activities, 
detailed design, verification and testing, and software as well as part of the mix, as well as hardware and electrical design. So we can see the different types of artifacts that we create in our different tools, requirements, functions, logical structure, physical structure, then validation information, and also downstream manufacturing, service, operational in information as well. So all of this really makes up the digital thread as our customers see it. And we need to make sure that we can connect all of these aspects of a design, of a product design, and allow our customers to manage and utilize it to help them with change control, redesign, modularity, efficiency, and also to be able to respond to changes in the future. And that might be the designs that they're making or the tools that they're using. Because obviously, not all customers will use PTC products only. There will be other products that come and go, get added into this mix. So OSLC provides a fantastic foundation to allow that to happen for our customers, to be able to connect the tools they use and to be able to change how they work and what tools they use much more easily than in the past without OSLC. So we, we talk about digital product traceability. Really, that's what our customers are very interested in is understanding the traceability across all of these aspects of the design. And every customer works uh, in a different way. A lot of them start really with PLM and redesign or reuse existing designs. So then they'll go to requirements, maybe system modeling, then verification. And they're really doing a fast version of a new product introduction. So we use as much as we possibly can, we use standard OSLC. This helps our customers with certification and qualification. And some of the standard examples are on the slide there. It helps to demonstrate the engineering design decisions. We can see the logic through the design from the requirements to the system modeling, the functional modeling, the physical design, the CAD models, the testing information. So it completes the entire life cycle. That gives us end-to-end -end traceability and ensures that we can understand the impact of change. When a requirement changes or a design changes or a supplier changes, we can understand how that's going to affect the design and what we need to do to accommodate those changes. In many cases, doing this today without OSLC, without a digital thread, is incredibly difficult and takes a huge amount of time and resource to make small changes because the information you need to make those decisions isn't connected or isn't available and accessible. So in terms of process, this is how a customer would work in an ideal scenario. They would define some requirements, they would define their functions that would satisfy those requirements. They would start with a logical structure the major systems and maybe variability that they want to utilize in this product. Then they probably start to work with more detailed engineering requirements, allocate the, the mod preliminary models to those detailed system engineering requirements. Potentially they do software design in modeler as well with UML. And then we'd have those detailed requirements allocated to physical designs in PLM, as well as software structure information in Windchill and RVNS. At the moment, Creo isn't OSLC enabled, but the Creo data gets stored in Windchill PLM. 
So indirectly, it still forms part of the digital thread, but it doesn't have a direct linkage from Creo itself. Across all of this, we have different types of simulation, some with Windshield Modeler, some in Creo, some with third-party tools like ANSYS, MATLAB. And then at the end, we have sets of information, design information for different disciplines, and they can all it can all be tested and validated in RVNS and connected together. So this is quite typical, certainly for new product introduction. Um, and obviously, a lot of customers change the order in which they do things, and they'll start with existing designs kind of in the middle and then loop back. So in terms of the capabilities that we have today, I wanted to make sure that it was completely clear what capabilities that we have in our software. So Winchell RVNS really focuses on managing requirements information and testing information. So those that information is exposed via an OSLC server that supports the requirements domain and the change management domain. Test artifacts are mapped to requirements. So you, it's configurable. You can determine what RVNS data maps to OSLC uh, domains. Um, but out of the box, this is how it works. So we expose that type of information. And RVNS also has a client for windshield parts. So inside RVNS, you can connect to windshield run a search for parts and then create OSLC links to the windshield data. Similarly, there's an OSLC client for windshield modeler that allows the RVNS user to create links to requirements and architecture management items. So typically that's UML, SysML uh, and other MBSC type data. And as well as that, you can also create links to your own data in the same instance of RVNS, or if there are multiple instances of RVNS, you can create links from one requirement in RVNS to another requirement in another instance. Modeler is an MBSE tool, so we manage requirements, functions, system and software architecture models, um, so we cover the requirements domain and the architecture domain. And we have an OSLC server capability that exposes that information. We have clients for requirements tools. So our own product, Winchell RVNS, IBM Doors Next, and also IBM Doors um, Classic. I'm not sure <laughs> exactly the, the term, but... IBM doors before it became next, we also have a client for Siemens Polarian, and we're working on the client for CodeBeamer. So what we've implemented here is a really consistent integration with the same features and functions, regardless of the target tool we're connecting to. So it really helps us to work with different types of um, vendors, different types of systems, and provide a consistent experience for the modeler user. And I think it's also a great illustration of the vision of OSLC is connecting tools together, even when they're from different vendors, to provide a you know seamless digital thread. So it's been um, actually, I noticed one of the Siemens guys was on the call yesterday, um, Adrian Whitfield. So they're obviously a, a big competitor of PTCs, but we've worked together because it's in the best interests of our customers, our shared customers, ourselves as well. And this is the vision of OSLC to enable those integrations. So that's really good progress. We have an OSLC client for parts in Winchell PLM. And as Gray was discussing a moment ago, we look forward very much to be able to integrate to other PLM tools in a more consistent manner 
and maybe provide more advanced capabilities, such as those Gray was discussing around configuration management, um, which is vital in the PLM world. So I think Modeler was the first product to start implementing OSLC at PTC. Um, and we've made really good progress and we're continuing to push for things forward. If we look at Windchill, so they have an OSLC server that exposes parts, but it actually uses the configuration management domain. So hopefully we'll be able to establish a product domain into the future. And then Windchill will at some point adopt that along with other PLM tools. They have clients for requirements management systems and MBSE tools like Modeler. I think they're also working on a, a client for Magic Draw as well. So they have the same vision, of course, that that the customers that we have have tools from different vendors. So we need to find ways to integrate and Without OSLC, it would be very, very difficult. Um, so yeah, again, I think this is a, a great story that we've been able to, we're able to work with other vendors. The transformation to electrified connected vehicles is creating new opportunities and challenges. Okay, so we have a quick movie and I'm just looking at the time I have available. This is one of our customers that make electric vehicles. Really, they make mobility solutions. Um, and they use all of our products in that we've just been discussing. And I'll, I'll skip forward a little bit. Range after charging in warmer conditions. I'm not sure if the audio comes through very well, but and rerun simulations on their digital twin. The results are used to improve battery management. Engine. So this is Windshield Modeler, and these are requirements that are connected to RVNS. So a lot of the key parameters that we're using in the model here come from um, the requirements tool via OSLC. And the system models, then immediately validate the modifications to check if the new design satisfies the requirements because there is a digital threat. And here we're actually we've jumped forward a little bit to understand the impact in the PLM tool. So this is Windshield PLM. Um, you can just see in the background a little bit of the product structure. So the, we have the requirement structure connected to the systems model, the systems model connected to the product structure in PLM. And here we can see the OSLC client at work in Windchill. So the users looking at a part and they're browsing modeler. So these are Windchill modeler data is the, the blocks you can see. And they're establishing that traceability or reviewing that traceability to understand what changes are needed for this redesign work. And connecting the system model requirements and the engineering build of materials, the team is. Uh, excuse me, I jumped off it. So at the end there, we just saw a, a preview that we have as well, show modeler data. Um, that movie goes and talks about some other capabilities, but those points show the digital thread working in action um, and the customer ego. Uh, I've been very happy with the OSLC capabilities. Um, okay, so that's a really good customer story. Our other capabilities that we have, uh, I won't talk in much detail, but suspecting, being able to understand when linked items have changed, very important. So we have some capabilities there. Single sign-on. Of course, when you're accessing data from multiple systems in a, a kind of transparent way, you do not want to have to keep logging in to multiple systems. So single sign-on is a, a complex thing to implement securely, but it's very important for user experience. Reverse lookup, which we'll look at in a moment, gives us a way to see OSLC links in a bi-directional manner. Something else that we, we've worked hard on is being able to accommodate data model extensions. So all our customers extend the data models in our tools, and we need to be able to configure the property mappings. So we determine what 
gets exposed for which OSLC property or type. Configuration management is a, a big topic. Um, so we're starting to address some configuration use cases, uh, but um, like we discussed with Gray earlier, that's a big topic that we're, we're continuing to push forward. Link maintenance is something really important. When, when the OSLC links need to change, needs to be a way for users to manage and maintain them. And ideally not one by one, ideally in, a, in, in bulk in some way. We're working on a viewer to show end-to-end -end cross product links. We have some nice prototypes that allow a user to jump across OSLC links across multiple tools. And it dynamically runs queries to retrieve the information live. Similarly with reporting, same kind of idea. It must be end-to-end -end cross product. And then work on the product domain that Gray mentioned earlier. So finally, um, I'll just show a demo of reverse lookup. So what we'll see in the moment is RVNS creating an OSLC link in RVNS. So it's stored in the RVNS database. The link points to modeler. Then we'll go into modeler and run a query called reverse lookup. And that allows the modeler user to see the OSLC link that's stored in RVNS. So let's go through and push forward. Okay, so straight away, we've got a, a requirements document with a list of requirements. We're gonna to connect to a modeler instance, which is my machine in this case. Here's a list of use cases. And we've improved the experience here. We've now got icons and some graphics here, but we've chosen some use cases. We're gonna create two OSLC links to them. So our requirement is now linked to those use cases. But in modeler, we can't really see that. It's not obvious because the link's in another tool. So we run this command, find external OSLC links. And this goes and runs a query on a dedicated API. And you can see it's actually run a query against modeler and against RVNS and it's found one link. So that was the item that we were just looking at in RVNS. Here's a preview of that resource. And we can go and look at the description. We can go and view in the native system. So this will open up a browser and take us th through to that requirement in RVNS. So this is a really important feature, ensuring that users can see links and relationships, even if it's stored in another system. Okay, that's that's me done. Feel free to contact me for any more information. You can connect on LinkedIn if you wish. Um, and let's have a look. There's some questions in yep. the chat. Is yes. TRS provided? Ah, sorry, the first one. Digital product traceability is a digital thread. Well, I guess it's all a bit marketing-y. Um, we, we call these capabilities digital product traceability. Digital thread is maybe slightly an abstract term, but really what, what we're focusing on is that traceability of the digital product. Um, it kind of means the same thing, I would say, but hopefully digital product traceability means a little bit more or a bit more descriptive. Um, there's an answer there. Is a TRS provided? We don't support tracked resource set at the moment, but we are looking at it. Um, it's something that the PLM organization would like to use. So we've had some discussions on the OP call about that. Support for OSLC configuration management. Well, uh, it's a difficult question. Um, when we connect to doors next, we're aware of global configurations. So 
we have some support for configuration management and it probably requires another 30 minutes. Um, so yes, when we connect to doors next, we are aware of the active global configuration. Um, and that will then, we use that information to resolve the resources correctly to the right version of a requirement. Um, but I think we've still got a lot of work to do, not, not just for doors, but for the other tools where configuration management is important. Uh, suspecting is based on timestamp comparisons for changes. So ELM, um, no, this has to work with it when ELM isn't involved. So it's really comparing modified timestamps and understanding if there has been a change that's detectable via OSLC. And if it is, does is that a later change than the last change we knew about? So again, quite a, can't give a particularly quick answer on that, but no, it's not based on ELM link validity. I don't understand enough to probably explain why that isn't the case, but um, I think it's an area where OSLC could probably um, firm up guidance, um, I think. Okay, so uh, hopefully... Patrick, there's one last question coming from Slack. Um, sure. Could you tell us um, what is the percentage of PDC customers that are using OSLC today? That's a good question. Um, because we have a broad set of products, um, for, for maybe half of our customers, it's not relevant, I would say. But if we look at, say, the windshield customers, the RVNS customers, the modeler customers, at least 50% of them are interested in connecting their digital products, so digital thread, at least 50% maybe up towards 75%. It's it's a hugely important part of our um, value to customers is to be able to connect their design tools in a, a coherent way um, because most of them are still using Excel and not, not doing things in an efficient manner. Um, so yes, it's... It's very important for us nowadays, and that's why we've invested quite a bit in our tool sets, as you can see, and we're continuing to push things forward as well. Okay, T two more questions were added in the Q&A, and then I think we'll have to stop here. Um, one about the linking to MathWorks system composer, and another related to the support for OSLC for CodeBeamer. Could you briefly say something about these two topics? So first question, we do not, link to MathWorks System Composer with OSLC today. But if this is a, something that's needed by our customers, then of course, we can actually implement an, another integration quite quickly. So as long as the output from MathWorks is logical and conformant, we can do it in a few weeks. Um, it takes longer to release the product, but the code needed is quite small to sort of plug it in to Modeler. Um, so it's always really customer driven. And today we haven't had any requests for that. Do you plan to support native OSLC for CodeBeamer? Yes, absolutely. We won't be using an adapter. We've, we've already written a good part of our OSLC native capabilities. And the clients in Modeler and Windchill will be coming soon as well. About when? Um, soon, I would say, very soon, really. So within the next three to six months. Okay, thank you so much, Patrick. We are all very excited to see a big banner like PDC support OSLC. So this is great news. And uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you, everyone.